The first step for creating your Cinderella petticoat will be to either make or purchase two very important underpinnings. A crinoline, preferably one with an elliptical shape, as well as one of these bad boys, a corset. The crinoline is going to give your dress support as well as the proper shape and the corset is going to bear the weight of your costume. You may also want to wear a corset to give you a smaller waistline, but that's optional. Once you're set with your underpinnings, the next step will be to create the base layer of your petticoat. If you look at production stills and in-progress photos of the dress that Lily James wore in the film, you'll notice that there is one layer to which all subsequent layers of the petticoat are sewn. This is the base layer of the petticoat. To create the base layer of the petticoat, I recommend using a fabric that is strong, but with a little bit of a slippery hand. That way it will be easier to ease it over your crinoline. In this progress photo, you can see that I selected a sturdy organza fabric to create the base layer of my petticoat. Note that it's well fitted, but it's not too tight. This will make it easier when you're donning your petticoat over your crinoline. A couple of features you may wish to include now rather than later are a waistband with a fastener, as well as loops for hanging your petticoat. Now that the base layer of your petticoat is complete, it's time to purchase fabrics for the remaining layers. How many yards you purchase depends on your height and how full you wish to make your petticoat. I'm 5'2 and know that I wanted to make a 7 layer petticoat, so some of the fabrics I purchased ended up being by the bolt, which I highly recommend. For example, for the ruffles, I purchased 10 10 yard bolts, so 100 yards of nylon crystal organza plus 20 yards of iridescent organza and an additional 30 yards of polyester crystal organza for the layers of the petticoat. If you're having difficulty finding fabrics in your desired color palette, one thing you might want to consider is dyeing your fabrics, which is what I did. I used Rit Dye More because it is specifically designed for nylon and polyester fabrics. Once you have all of your fabrics in your desired color palette, gather up that crystal organza because it's time to start creating ruffles. Reference photos of the petticoat worn in the film show that it is comprised of multiple layers of ruffles made of alternating blocks of color. I used pale blue, blue, lavender, and aqua on repeat. So to create each color block, you're going to take your crystal organza and cut it into rectangular strips. My strips ended up being 9.5 inches wide by 52 inches long. To cut out your ruffles, lay out your fabric with the selvages together and fold multiple times lengthwise. Pin your pattern piece in place and cut through all layers. Later on in this tutorial, you'll also see that I included a couple of layers of ruffles made from iridescent organza. I use the same exact approach when cutting those ruffles. And here's the completed strips for the light blue organza. Complete the same steps for all of your crystal organza ruffle fabrics. Once the various shades of organza have been cut into rectangular strips, they will be sewn end to end, the raw edges will be finished to avoid fraying, and then they will be gathered to form ruffles. Once all of your different colored rectangles are sewn end to end, I recommend going in and finishing the raw edges to prevent fraying. My preferred method is the rolled hem. You now have a very, 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 very long multicolored rectangle. The next step will be to gather one edge to create ruffles. You can do this by using your serger, using a base stitch on your sewing machine and pulling one of the threads, or you can use my favorite method, which is to use a ruffle foot on your sewing machine, which we're gonna see next. When all your ruffles are well and truly ruffly, the next step is to pin them to the base layer of the petticoat. To create a relatively level hem, I measured the same distance from the floor and marked it on the base layer. I then used this line as a guide for where to place the ruffles. 
it's a good idea to determine how far off the ground you want your hem at this stage before adding the remaining layers. After all the ruffles are pinned in place, sew them down and layer one of the petticoat is complete. Now we can move on to creating the remaining layers. To create the petticoat layers, we're going to be using a lot of the same techniques that we use to make ruffles. So I'm just going to summarize the next few steps. Take your organza fabric and cut it into a long rectangular strip, finishing the top and bottom edges to prevent fraying. You may be wondering how wide this strip of fabric needs to be, and the answer depends on how much of a sticker you are for petticoat math. Petticoat math basically dictates that each layer should be two to three times the width of the previous layer. I did not follow this rule in the slightest and basically just gauged each layer as I went along, but that's up to you. The next step will be to pin your ruffles to the bottom edge and sew them down. And then last but not least, we are going to be taking the layer, gathering it down, and then pinning it to the base layer of our petticoat. So here is the base layer of the petticoat, which for simplicity we're going to call layer one because it has the first layer of ruffles. So I know that I want layer two to go right about here so that those ruffles are even. And which also means that I want my top edge of my strip to fall right about here. So I'm gonna mark it with a pin, and that way when I'm pinning everything down, I know that I want the top edge to rest right there. As you can see, the second layer has been placed onto the petticoat, and now I'm just gonna go in and add some pins to secure it in place before stitching it down. As you move through the process of creating each petticoat layer, a good measurement to keep in mind is length. For example, after pinning on layer 2, I measured from the waist to the top edge of the ruffles, and that measurement let me know how much length I had available for the next layer and beyond. And here's the completed layer. From here on out, it's going to be the same steps on repeat. Create your petticoat layers and then stitch them at the desired points on your petticoat base. And with the addition of the final layer, the petticoat is complete. You may notice that the layers don't go all the way up to the waistband. I did this because I was concerned that it would be too tight to fit over the crinoline. This way it has a little bit more ease. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. The next video in this series will focus on creating the dress itself. Oh, and by the way, no petticoat tutorial would be complete without some quality spinning footage, so please stay tuned and enjoy. Thank you!